This is the Barbados Today Afternoon News for Friday, September 1st. Thank you for joining us. I am Mary Claire Williams. Police are investigating the discovery of a body at Melverton, St. George. The body of the Caucasian male was found early this morning, and lawmen say they are now seeking to determine his identity. In other news, one criminologist has been putting forward some recommendations for solving the island's rising crime problem. Senior Research Officer at the Criminal Justice Research and Planning Unit in the Attorney General's Office, Kim Ramsey, was addressing a panel discussion on the topic last night. The latest incidents of violence include a, a cutlass attack on two women in St. Peter yesterday and a double murder in St. Philip on Tuesday night. Ramsey believes law enforcement officials need to adopt a holistic approach to crime, including an overhaul of the education system. The short-term solution, in my opinion, is that we have to, first of all, go into the communities that are problematic, where there's evidence of, of um, groups, criminal groups. We have to disband these groups by whatever means necessary. And that obviously is a law enforcement um, tactic that I cannot speak to because I'm not in law enforcement, but um, I believe that's the, that's the immediate solution. Because um, there's a lot of intelligence on the ground. No one ever think that the police don't know what's going on. Police always know what's going on. So we have to target those 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 groups. Do a lot of raids and so on. I find that we have this anti-police sentiment that is very pervasive in our society. But we have to quell it, um, or we will be in a state of enemy lawlessness. The immediate term solution I also agree with you. We have to look at education. We have to look at our young people. We have to put, put programs in the community to be with these persons. Um, in the school setting. As I said, we know who the average persons are, so we've, uh, we've already um, established that we need to deal with that. And then the long-term solutions are the problems that are not solved in a political way. And on the matter of concerns over rising gun crime, there have been calls for greater scrutiny of the island's ports of entry. And President of the National Union of Public Workers, Akani McDowell, himself a former law enforcement officer, is calling for any customs officers found to be breaking the law to be brought to justice. Before I became a member, the president of the union, I was a member of the Barbados Defense Force. was a soldier for four years, and I worked directly with the police services. So I know about all of the areas that illegal activity in this country would take place. So I have some experience myself. Nonetheless, I'm gonna end by agreeing that if there is any time or any, time, any point where we have evidence that officers are supporting the criminal activity in this country. I support wholeheartedly as a unionist and as the president of NUPW that that officer be disciplined to the fullness of the law. And that is my position as you. I will not support officers engaging in illegal activity but similarly, I will also support officers who do an honest day's work. Barbados and the rest of the Caribbean have made significant strides in HIV and AIDS research. But health officials are continuing to face the challenge of getting people to know their HIV status. One such health representative, Professor Clive Landis, says an infected person can only be treated effectively if they get tested. Professor Landis told Barbados Today at the end of a five-day summit that HIV is no longer a death sentence, particularly with advancement in treatment. Now this is the reason why the whole HIV epidemic is now turning in our favor. And that is because when you place people on treatment, you suppress virus in their body and they are non-infectious. So we have We've actually known this since 1999. Tom Quinn was the first person to show it. He came to our conference. And it took 10 years to do a clinical trial where you took persons who went on immediate treatment and those who, in those days, we used to defer treatment. And what he showed in um, where you had partners, one partner would have HIV, the other partner did not. Okay? If you're on treatment, the person with HIV would not infect the partner without HIV. 
So it was a 94% suppression in sexual transmission, and that's now been validated over five years. Professor Landis says similar results were found in another study which tracked over 50,000 cases of unprotected sex between both heterosexual and homosexual couples, where one partner was infected and receiving treatment. Guess how many transmissions there have been after 58,000 acts of unprotected sex? None. And I'm serious about this. This is called the Partner Study by Alison Roger. And so at this point, it is incontrovertible that when you suppress the virus, you cannot transmit it. So, what have we got now? It basically is now a disease that you live with. It's a virus that we don't really consider that potent a virus anymore because we have all the treatments. And if someone is on treatment, that person is no longer infectious. Now, in my opinion, that changes everything. It actually changes the way that the general public should even look at this disease. Um, because really, the whole of the HIV field has now boiled down to one task. We only have one task, and that is to find everyone who has HIV to know their status and receive treatment. There's regional and international news after this short break. Thank you for staying with us. We're back with news from the region and we have an update on Hurricane Irma. The latest advisory issued by the U.S.-based National Hurricane Center says the storm is now 1,580 miles east of the Leeward Islands. Irma is moving towards the west and northwest near 13 miles per hour and it is expected to turn west by tonight, followed by a turn towards the west-southwest on Saturday. Maximum sustained winds are near 110 miles per hour with higher gusts. Forecasters say the strength of the Category 3 storm could fluctuate in the next few days, but Irma is expected to remain a powerful hurricane through the weekend. And islands in the Eastern Caribbean are continuing to monitor the progress of the storm. And finally, on the international scene, Kenya's opposition leader, Raila Odinga, today called for the prosecution of officers of the Electoral Committee following a landmark ruling by the Supreme Court to nullify the results of last month's election. The court declared President Uhuru Kenyatta's victory invalid due to irregularities committed by the election board. He also ordered a new vote within 60 days. Kenya has a history of disputed elections, and Odinga challenged the 2007 poll, which he lost. A row over the results led to the deaths of more than 1,200 people. But this time, his team is focusing on proving that the process of counting and transmitting the results was flawed. This indeed is a very historic day for the people of Kenya, and by extension, for the people of the continent of Africa. For the first time in history of African democratization, a ruling has been made by a court nullifying irregular elections of a president. This is a, a president-setting ruling. They are very historical. As has been said by my other colleagues, we have no faith at all in the Electoral Commission as currently constituted. They have committed criminal acts. Most of them actually belong to jail. And therefore we are going to ask for prosecution of all the Electoral Commission officers who have caused this monstrous crime against the people of Kenya. 
That's news this afternoon. You can get more on our website www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates and like us on Facebook. We're on Izumi Media in bus terminals and on screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also find us on Mix 96.9 FM. I am Marie Claire Williams. Good afternoon.